Forbidden Fruit, The Temptation of Edward Cullen. Hey, my name's Altalina, Rebecca Lauren, but everyone calls me Tina, or just plain Tia. I am a 16-year-old girl, and I live in Forks, Washington. My hair is long and pale, like spun gold, and skims to my waist, like a pale shimmering amber mist. My eyes are deep forget-mint blue, and my delicate ventures are lily white and pure as the winter snow in moonlight. I've been told by lots of sleazy, ugly, horny guys that I'm real pretty, but basically a lot of girls I meet tell a different story. They say I'm too ivory white and ethereal and too skinny and I look anorexic, which I don't care about, but I think it's seriously disrespectful to people with real eating disorders. I am quite tall and slim. And but with really big boobs. I used to hate because they look noticeable on my slender body and draw too much attention, but now I like them and don't care who stares at me. It is my first day in school in Forks as I just moved there to live with my new foster parents, Dave and Marie. They are nice and all very wholesome, sweet people, but it is not like having a real family. I've been hurt too many times to let people close to me, and I don't talk to them very much. My real mom died when I was born, and I never knew my real dad. I sometimes wonder what he is like, and if I will ever get to meet him. Dave gave me a ride to school, and I smiled faintly as he wished me good luck, and I got out of the car and went, to, went into the school. Lo loads of people were freaking stared at me as I walked down the hall. I was used to it and paid no attention to the guys asking desperately for my number. Like hell I'd even look at the horny little donkeys. And told old a ditzy blonde cheerleader named Jessica to shut the fuck up when she called me a freak. Next time she tries anything I'll hit her in the eye cause no one messes with me me more. My teachers all looked at me disapproval but said nothing because they probably knew I was a foster kid and a gothic and didn't want to upset me in case I cut them up as they slept. At lunch I sat alone in the corner and scanned the cafeteria. It was then I noticed the an unbelievably jaw-dropping hot 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 dude with tusted blondy brown hair, golden yellow eyes like wells of hot caramel and sexy features. A girl sat next to him with long brown hair with her eyes tripped over him like some freaking flesh-eating blood. So I thought, well, whatever, he's taken. Now I wandered to my next class. I bumped into someone in the corridor. Terry TF! Watch where you're freaking going, you asshole! I have anger problems. I'm so, so sorry. Please forgive me, my lady. It was the pale hot guy! Whatever. I didn't mean to yell and be wide. How are too beautiful for that? I'm you, Dad Cullen. Who are we? You could call me Tiana or maybe Tia. For once, I didn't feel like cock dropping the guy for paying me a compliment. Instead, I just smiled. Val reminds me of bygone times. My face is like an old painting. Val is exceptional. You're not so shanky yourself. But I couldn't help noticing you have a freaking GF, you ass. I saw you with her in a cafeteria. He did notice me then. He wanted to sex me, I could tell. And suddenly he was kissing me. He stoked my breast for a few minutes. And his man carried standing in action and hard as a rocket catch my legs. And then he ripped my top and pulled it off. We made out for 10 minutes and then he tried to take off my bra. Bastard! Never touch me again! Wait! I need to speak to thee! I know your secret, Tia. Fie! A campire, Tia! A vampire! But why can't I read foul mind? I thought Bella was the only one, but here thou are. What does this all mean? I started rugging away to math. Tia, no! He screamed after me, tearing his shit off himself in fury. I sat alone watching TV at Dave and Marie's house. I couldn't stop thinking about my encounter with Eudard Cullen earlier that day. Suddenly, the phone rang. Hello? Hey, is that Altalina? Yeah, who is this? It's Mike Newton from your class. I was wondering if you'd like to go to La Push with me tomorrow night, maybe. Are you the guy who hangs out with all the prophetic cheerleaders and stuff? You mean Bella and Jessica's guy? Sometimes I guess but they're way too shallow and not as hot as you. Why hang out with them, you shallow creep? And why are you asking me out when you hardly know me, Mike? Because you think I'm hot? 
Why can't you see you're just as shallow if you want to date someone just because of what they look like? I'm not that pretty anyways. You're so beautiful you can't even imagine. You're so pretty people lose their minds when you're around. I forget their names, I forget how to breathe. You're cool and different and are honest about stuff. You're right to be angry with me. I'm sorry for benign, shallow and dumb. Just give me a chance to show you how much I care. Please? Well, okay, maybe it'll go along if I don't have anything else to do. I said, not believe a word he said about how pretty I was. Mike Newton was kind of cute and seemed like an okay guy, but he was nothing next to Eudard Cullen. Although I was angry with Edward and I had ever been with anyone in my life, part of my soul would always remain in that corridor where he kissed so hard and passionately. I creamed myself. Bye, Tia. We'll be back on Thursday, okay? Okay, then. Have fun. I whispered clamly. Dave and Marie were visiting relatives for a few days. You look so pretty. You're the prettiest girl I've ever seen. OMG whatever. Dave's brother Larry will be looking after you while you're gone. I don't need a freaking babysitter, you know. Marie smiles and leaves the house. My name's Uncle Larry, said Uncle Larry. You're the orphan, aren't you? Is it true you killed your mother when she gave birth to you? What? I cried, my eyes filling with tears. You're an evil bitch, aren't you? Go outside and wash my car. I ran outside and started to wash Hush's car. He came outside and watched me, and I knew he was watching me. After a minute, he came over and hit me hard across the face. WTF? He started to rip my dress and bra off me and rip my clothes. Stop raping me! I cried, but he didn't stop. The pain was terrible, even though his manhood was small. I cried and cried, but he didn't stop for hours. And when he finally stopped, he left me on the floor and left me there. I pulled on my clothes and cried madly and ran off into the seething darkness of the midnight street. I ran and ran until I came to some woods, where I fell down in the woods and cried. I closed my eyes and saw the face of a tall white man looking over me with no expression. Ala Tiana, he whispered with a voice softened in clouds. My daughter? OMG, I whispered as my mind went blank and the world went dark.